In this video, I'm going to be talking about the expectation value of the Hamiltonian for stationary states. This video is part three of a mini series about stationary states. You can find some links in the description below. First of all, I'm going to write down some things that we're going to need to understand the expectation value of the Hamiltonian and what makes it so special uh, for these stationary states. So let's go ahead and write down the time independent Schrodinger equation in terms of the Hamiltonian operator. So we've actually seen this in uh, some of the previous videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. So make sure you check those out before you watch this video. So what we're going to have is the Hamiltonian operator, h with a little hat. It's acting on uh, the spatial part of the wave function, which is little psi. And that's the same as just multiplying the little psi by the energy. This is the energy eigenvalue. This is the allowed energy uh, level, the allowed energy value. So this over here, this is the time-independent Schrodinger equation written in terms of the Hamiltonian operator. Another thing that we actually need is we need the final conclusion from part two in this mini-series. And that final conclusion was that if you want to find the expectation value of any observable quantity, q, that is the same as taking the integral sandwich of q. But it's a very special integral sandwich because it's not capital Psi, it's little Psi. And this is only true uh, for these stationary states. They can be split, up, split apart into separable uh, functions, right? So one function just depends on x, that's this one, and then there's an exponential factor which includes the time dependence. So this over here, this is the final conclusion from the previous video. So refer to the previous video if you want to see a derivation of this and how we can actually get rid of the time dependence and get rid of those pesky exponential factors. So that is actually what makes these stationary states very special. Now we're going to take this general form of the expectation value and we're going to apply it specifically to the Hamiltonian. Now if you remember from the previous video, uh, this condition over here was only true if q uh, only depended on x and p and there weren't any uh, partial time derivatives because those partial time derivatives were very pesky and they uh, prohibited us from swapping the exponential factor and the operator q. But because the Hamiltonian doesn't have any time derivatives in it, it's just a, a function of momentum and position, we can actually use this and apply it. So let's go ahead and apply it. So let's go ahead and find the expectation value of h. So this is the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. And we're just dealing with stationary states. So this isn't the general expectation value for any possible wave function. This is only those special wave functions that are uh, of the form of separable solutions. So again, we're going to take the integral sandwich. We're going to do the same thing that we have over there. Integral sandwich from minus infinity to plus infinity. And we're going to have little psi star. And we're going to have the Hamiltonian operator acting on psi. And we can integrate this with respect to x. Now, have a look at this. Up here, we have the time-independent Schrodinger equation, where we have the Hamiltonian operator acting on psi. What do we have down here? We have the same thing. So this over here, we can group together. And we know that this is actually equivalent to e times psi. So the Hamiltonian operator acting on psi is exactly the same as e multiplying psi. So it's exactly the same as a constant multiplying psi. I'll go ahead and write that in here. So we have the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of little psi star times e times psi and with respect to x. That's what we're integrating with respect to. So we've actually just said that this guy is equivalent to this. Why are they equivalent to each other? It's because of the time-independent Schrodinger equation. That's the one we talked about in some of the previous videos. That's this one up here. So that's what allows us to take this guy and just replace it by its eigenvalue e. And that's the allowed energy level uh, associated with this psi over here. So now let's go ahead and pull this constant out. Remember, it is just a constant. And constants can just be pulled out of the integral. You can always swap the order of a constants because there's no derivatives that are going to act on those constants. So let's go ahead and pull that out. And that's going to give us this over here. We're going to have e 
times the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of psi star times psi dx. Okay, so here we just have a constant, and here we have an integral of psi star psi dx. Now, do you remember what psi star times psi is? This is just the wave function's square magnitude, or the probability density function. We found that out in part one of this mini-series on stationary states. We found that this is actually the same as the probability density function. So we can rewrite this as e times the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of little psi of x squared dx. And this is actually exactly the same as, I'm trying to fit it in over here in the bottom corner, e times the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of capital Psi of x and t, all squared and integrated with respect to x. So this guy is the probability density function. This guy is also the probability density function, and this is also the probability density function. Now why are these guys all equivalent? Well, it's because the exponential factors cancel out and the time dependence disappears in the probability density function. That's a special property of these stationary states. So all of these guys are actually equivalent. And we know that the wave function has to be normalized. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a physically uh, reasonable state. So if we know that it's normalized, then we know that the area underneath the curve of the probability density function has to be equal to 1. So that means this integral is 1. And this integral is equivalent to this integral. That's also 1. And this integral over here, that's also 1. So all of these integrals are actually just equal to 1. So we're just multiplying e by a big integral that evaluates to 1. What does that mean? It means that the expectation value of h is just equal to e. Now that is the takeaway message from this video. The expectation value of the Hamiltonian is equal to the allowed energy value. And this e is specific to whatever psi is. Psi is, uh, actually describes the state that the particle is in. And so if you measure the particle, what you're going to get is this value e. Or actually, this is the expectation value. We're going to find uh, some other important expectation values. We're also going to find the variance of the Hamiltonian in later uh, videos in this little mini-series. But here is the most important takeaway message over here. The expectation value of the Hamiltonian is equal to this energy e. And we're just dealing with a stationary state. So the stationary state has a definite energy, which we'll actually see uh, has a variance of zero. We're going to find that out in the next few videos. So what's the most important uh, takeaway message from this video? Uh, you can actually use the time-independent Schrodinger equation, put it inside this integral, and what you're going to get is e multiplied by an integral that evaluates to 1. And all of these guys are actually equivalent to each other. This is the probability density function. This is the probability density function, and we know that psi star times psi, these guys are little psi's, that's just going to be equivalent to this. So, we're going to use this fact in later videos. Make sure you watch all the videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. You can find them all by clicking over here.